because, and then the kids are supposed to react to it. They're like, it's like this Hungarian village. Uh, there are these kids, farmer kids, hanging around the pig. It farts, they laugh. And Matt turns to me and goes, you know, pig farts, that sounds like a really good English band name. And we're just trying to figure this out. It's like, yeah, but we're gonna have like, a, like an adjective to it. What are we gonna do with that? And it's like, English band names have this weird, elaborate adjective pattern of names, I don't know. So it's like, okay, what do we do, what do we do, what do we do? Belligerent. The belligerent pig farts. And thus, our fake English band was born. <laughs> and during that same session, you know, we just had goofing off and having that kind of fun. There's one scene, it's me, him, I think one other guy, and four girls. And there was a scene where these gypsy refugee children are uh, on the move in their caravan, and they're despondent, and they've been walking for miles, and moaning and groaning, and uh, just really, just really despondent. So since they were kids, they asked the girls to do the voices for that. And uh, it was a one minute take of girls, of all the girls up in the mic, just moaning and groaning, and me and Matt started realizing that this did not sound right. <laughs> so it was just one whole minute of me and him trying to avoid eye contact with each other, because every time I look over, he's just looking at me and going. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying not to laugh, it's like a full minute of oxygen I did not get from just holding in my laughter. And as soon as the director yells cut, he and I burst out and just hit the ground and look up and just see the girls looking at us like, boys. <laughs> that's my funny story. Um, I actually thought of another one kind of, oh. that I have for, for, for Maggie, because that's, you know, that's all I think about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I like Waste sweet, as much time as we can. We've got an hour to fill. Well, yeah, okay, that too. So, um, so I go into my first session, and if you don't know already, Ma, uh, Aladdin is this little 10-year-old boy um, who likes women's breasts. So he will like, if he sees like a really voluptuous woman, he will go out and like jump into her chest or like, you know, motorboat them or whatever and like touch them. And it's, it's, it's weird, but it's kind of cute. Like, I don't know. I don't want to say it's cute. But, you know. um, Sexual harassment's okay. So, yeah, of course. Because yeah. like, it's consensual because they think it's adorable. Like, <laughs> I would kill a 10 year old kid that did this. Yeah. Um, but. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so of course I had to record some of these scenes where he's making these noises, where he's like face first and he's like breast. So there's this one scene where there, uh, Alibaba takes Aladdin to a brothel, and there's like all these, you know, these ladies. And he's like rubbing his face. And he's like, oh my god! <laughs> like, so I have to make these noises, and then um, after we took a break from that. I have the, the casting director, uh, Mami Okada, and the producer, Sawako, they, they come out and they join me and they're like telling me you know, how good of a job I'm doing. And, and Mami, the casting director, is like, oh, you're, you're really good at, at making those noises, like the, the groping noises. And I was like, yeah, I've got a lot of experience. And I was like, no, I don't. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes I make jokes. And I know people don't think I'm serious, but I'll be like, no, 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 I'm kidding. Because I just want to make sure that they don't think I actually touch people like that. <laughs> yes? How much preparation time do you give for a role? Do they just like, here's the script on Monday and show up? None. It's not, just, it's not even that, not even the script on Monday. We get the script, we see the lines the first time as we're recording them. Yeah, the script is just right in front of us. We don't get any kind of preparation for that. We, I mean, we have the added benefit nowadays of having Hulu and crunchy role to kind of watch the shows before they come out in a legal manner. Yeah, that yeah. works for anime. <laughs> that works for anime, yeah. But, but basically we audition, we get like a few lines to read for the characters, we see pictures sometimes. Most of the time. Sometimes, Most yeah. of the time we see pictures. And if we don't see pictures, we can look it up usually if we know the name of the show, which we usually can figure it out if yeah. we don't know. Because we're smart like that. Um, and it takes maybe anywhere from a week to like a month before they cast, and like he said, you basically just wait for the, the session to happen, and then you go in, there's the script, and you, it's basically a cold read. Yep. I try to look over it as much as I can while I'm, I'm waiting for the direction and stuff. But yeah, that's the it, process of it. Oh, it's even worse for video games. Yeah, sometimes, because like a lot of the times... You don't even get the context of 
so you just kind of like read it. Yeah. I, I had uh, actually Pac-Man. They sent me the script beforehand. That's Pac -Man and really the, rare. The Treasure Island anime I did. Um, they sent me the script beforehand, and I don't know why, but it was kind of interesting being able to see that stuff and uh, kind of, I guess, try to think about how I'm going to perform things, but that doesn't always help. The director will always push you in a different direction based on what they want. So, yeah. And like I said, you can watch it on Hulu, but you, know, you don't really want to lock in a performance like how you're going to do this because you want to be knowledgeable for the director. Yeah. And you've got, because you're doing it, the process, like I said, is individual, line by line, and what you'll do is you will get a preview of the Japanese uh, take, how the Japanese person did the line that you're about to record, then uh, you do it. Uh, it's a three beep system, ADR, so you'll hear beep, 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 and on the fourth imaginary beep is when you start talking, when the lip flaps start moving. Um, so you really have to like keep an eye on the monitor and you have the line in front of you that you just saw for the very first time and you're trying to memorize it and you know, try and match the timing and it's like you know, rubbing your stomach and patting your head and kicking up your leg and winking at the same time. It's so many, so much layers. multitasking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes so, you'll have the luxury of um, having other people have recorded before you so you'll get a little bit of how their performance was so you can back off of it. That's always preferable. Always good. I didn't have that a lot for a lot and I was side um, and the line was delivered I want to go into the future like big pregnant pause with Yuna by my side just really quick and it was obviously compressed you can obviously tell when yeah. stuff's compressed like that because it just sounds unnatural because they still have I mean in video games they still have timing they have like a specific time frame they have to have the line within um, usually it's kind of a free for all you know, sometimes yeah I mean there are some projects that they really wanted to be within the same movies on a desert island. island. Silence of the Lambs, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, maybe, let me pick some favorite movies. Maybe, Wreck-It Ralph, just so I can, because it's one of my new favorites. Um,
I think for what hasn't been done, I would just say the upcoming Sailor Moon show. <laughs> I would love to be in that. Um, I don't know who has. I, I, I would want to go as Tuxedo Mask, but I know I would never. Clearly Sailor Moon, yeah, absolutely. And when they promote you, when they would promote you at Con, would you wear the Sailor Cuckoo? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I can really work it. <laughs> okay. No, I think with my uh, with my voice and my style of acting, I'd probably get that little nerdy kid with the spiral glasses. Okay. And at Melvin, that was at Melvin, yeah. I'd want to go over to Cathedral Mask, but I don't think I would ever get it. But I don't know, I'd, I'd like to be a part of this. I watched Sailor Moon and Antonami growing up with Dragon Ball Z and all those others after school, so that'd be fun. You say you don't watch anime that has the dubs, so you don't know other one? Uh, I mean, I... Everybody was talking about Kill la Kill and I haven't seen it yet. Um, I, I've seen a couple of episodes and it does look like it's fun. And I would love to be something like, what is his name? Nudist Beach. Oh, Mikisugi. Mikisugi, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, he sounds like he'd be fun. <laughs> but uh, I, again, I usually only watch the like flavor of the day. So Kill la Kill would have been it, or Attack on Titan when that was just starting. Because I'll only watch what everybody else is talking about on Facebook. That's what I can only make time for. It's usually good research, too, because yeah. you can tell what shows are going to be picked up and, and what's going to be next. The only problem is deciding if Funimation is going to do it in Texas or if it's yeah. going to be done in LA with Zoom or somebody else. Yes? Go for it. that I made through online interactions. I uh, talked to some voice actors in chat rooms and some would have live streams and I would get to know them through that. And I would also go down to AX uh, every year. In fact, one year, I, in 2009, I stayed with a friend of mine for about a month in California just as a scouting mission because I knew that's where I was gonna end up. Um, so I went down there in July, did the conventions in AX, uh, San Diego Comic Con, did a couple of workshops and just kind of got myself out there. And then after I graduated, I uh, saved up quite a bit of money through uh, restaurant work and just as much as I could. And had a friend down there who already said, you know, you can stay with us for a couple of months as a placeholder until you find your own permanent place. So definitely having a network down there really helps. Um, and as far as how much you need to save, it varies person to person how much you're going to be paying with like if you have car payments, student payments, uh, insurance, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Generally, what you want to have is three months worth of living expenses in your savings account. Um, that will help you a lot, and you may plow through that really quickly when you move down to California. Because it's really expensive down there. But uh, if you get do get a solid foundation and you're not hemorrhaging money out of your savings account, start building that back up to three months savings and kind of keep it there because you never know what's going to happen. It's a very volatile, volatile city. Yeah, um, for me, my story's a little weird because I, uh, I was living in Chicago and you know, I was doing two jobs at the time and my, my boyfriend, I, was, I did a long distance relationship for about two years. Um, I worked in New York and he does voiceover full time, so he decided to make the plunge to go to California. So once he did that, um, he and a few other people that we were going to room with already had a place lined up after a while. 
So, so he moved out. I ended up moving out um, like in August or so. And the day after I moved out, he was staying with our friend Laura. So I stayed with them for like a day or two. And then we were ready to move into our new apartment. And it's the same apartment I've been living in since then. Um, and uh, working two jobs to save up money was definitely a good idea. Uh, I don't think I saved up quite enough. Um, at the time. I mean, it was a decent amount. I obviously am still in LA, so it worked out, but uh, I'm the kind of person where it's like, if I have a certain amount of money under what is comfortable for me, like for me, it was about $2,000 was the, the comfort zone. And once it got <coughs> close to that, I was like, oh God, what am I gonna do? <laughs> um, so it, it got close to that for a while because I couldn't find a job um, for a few months. And uh, finally I got, job that I'm doing, doing now, um, working from home, I, I do, uh, uh, I work for a kids game online forum, which is pretty cool, and then I do voiceover on the side, so everything's nice and healthy now, but it was scary for a while, because California is, it's a big step, really, it's like, like Eric was saying, it's, it's expensive, luckily our, well, my rent's pretty, pretty decent for being in California, but um, yeah, it's, definitely want to save up quite a bit. Yes. It's, it gets tough out there because everybody's trying to do the acting thing, you know, whether it's on-camera acting or voiceover. It's, it's competitive. Yeah, to put it in perspective, I think what the price for a one-bedroom here would probably be a really crappy studio apartment in Koreatown, in like downtown in, in LA. That's, it's a lot more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get a really nice one-bedroom here for the same price. Um, as far as the Attack on Titan goes, um, I really would have loved to play Aaron. I, that's the thing, is a lot of your work is subject to who you've connected with, and so far I have not uh, networked with Funimation, um, or many of the Texas companies. Um, so Bryce had that advantage, and uh, I think he did a really, really, really good job as Aaron, and I would not take that away from him. Uh, but it would have been cool to do another Yuki Kachi role. Uh, actually, the uh, producers of Maki, we were having dinner with recently, and they were just like, oh, we're so amazed at just how similar to him you sound. Just how you, like when I did the, when you did the yell at the panel the other day, that was exactly Yuki Kachi. And they- It's like the biggest compliment. It's the biggest compliment, yeah. I think that was a really good compliment. And they said they're gonna go talk to him, uh, tell him about us, uh, or uh, both the, in the both Japanese voice cast and tell them about you know what we thought of working under the, uh, their guidance. It's real cool. <laughs> Any other questions? You just arrived and asked us like literally everything. Yeah, we're not. We don't care. <laughs> we got time to fill. You can, this is you can a, ask me my shoe size. <laughs> nine, by the way. Um, so don't ask that question. Yes. Eric, can you talk about working on uh, Cell World? Yeah, um, Cell World was really fun. It's a very different protagonist than you would normally get, the short, pudgy, nerdy kind of character with the shrill voice that would probably make your ears bleed if you listen to it too long. It did, I watched the whole series. Yeah. <laughs> I recorded the whole series and my ears were just in cans. <laughs> just listening to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> That's usually how it goes, not just with Harder. Oh, yeah. yeah that's true. <laughs> um, my ears but, are bleeding right now. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> it's, uh, it was something that we had to approach differently as well because he wasn't the strong uh, character that you know goes forth and does all these cool things it was the really nerdy character really wimpy uh, downtrodden kind of person and we had this idea of okay we need to know where he's going to go in his journey we need to know how by the end of the series he's going to be versus how he is now so it was really fun to be able to go on a character with that kind of long uh, development process rather than just a one-shot villain or side character that appears in an episode. And I'm a huge fan of literature. I read the uh, Joseph Campbell's Hero of a Thousand Faces that outlines the hero's journey, the monomyth you'll find throughout history and in storytelling. And it was really cool to kind of associate that with certain aspects of Haru's journey. It's like, oh, that's the, that's the meeting with the goddess and that's the, the obtaining of the mythical item and stuff like that. So it was really, really fun. That show's kind of funny because, you know, you see the, if you haven't seen the character like Eric was describing, he's like this little pudgy kid. He actually, he's like, he's, he's so awkward.
awkward and, and nerdy that it's like his form in this digital world that they end up going into is a pig. He's like a really tiny kind of pig. So that I think that shows a lot about how the creator viewed him, really. Yeah. And I, I guess the story behind that character actually is um, it's the same creator that made Sword Art Online. Yeah. So the, from what I hear, he he thought he made Kirito and Asuna so perfect and like so you know Mary Sue and. Gary Stu. Gary Stu, that's, yeah. They all go But um, he made them so perfect that his next series, he had to make someone that was just, you know, just the, the lowest form, <laughs> awkward nerd that you can get. But it's, it's hilarious, because I hear that, and then it's like, well, he has the most popular girl in school going after him, so how does that... Anime. Like, <laughs> I mean, not to say that it doesn't happen, but... You go from making these two perfect characters to making this character that you're you're trying to create to make up for that, and then you yeah. make them the prettiest girl in the school, and it's like no, that's not how it works. And it's not just her as his childhood friend. That's also yeah, goes after it's like him. Anime. anime at some point. Yeah. Like everybody falls in love with him. And it's just like no. I can argue that with Sword Art Online and Kirito too, because he's got like Asuna and no, Silica. That's, and that's okay, because that was kind of like already done. But he's trying to make Haru to make up for that. True. True. Yeah. Excel World was actually my first thing with thing Oh yeah? It was just Walla. I did Walla right. for it, but I'm like in the, the first episode. Cool. I, I don't know what to say. Probably like, oh, oh you know, Yugi, your hair is like that. <laughs> What's your beauty thing? Even oh, though yeah. she's in like a digital world, I think which I, doesn't make sense. I think I remember that one actually. Virtual shampoo. Um, but yeah, it was, I watched it's it. It's a good show. Not because you were in it, because I don't um, like you. Right. But my boyfriend was in it as Takuma, his best friend. Yeah, Lucian and I uh, were always kind of paired off in shows. Yeah, my, my boyfriend is Lucian Dodge, if you've ever heard of him. He does uh, Waver and Fate Zero and Top Moon Excel World. He was Jafar, Jafar and Mahi, yeah, and Blue in Pokemon Origins, and a bunch of other stuff. He's well yeah, he and I have the same, well, not, I mean, we approach it differently, but we have a very similar voice prints, the youthful kind of thing. So we're always either paired up or against one another and nothing else it seems. Well, I, I, I have a shampoo the same way you guys do. Yeah, you can. Twice. Twice, actually. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes I will audition, my, like our voice, my voice is so high, sometimes I will audition against my own roommate, Sarah Williams, who's done like Jinx in uh, League of Legends and Sayaka in Monica Magica, and she's got this really high pitched voice. And sometimes they'll send her something and then a week later decide, no, we're not going to go with the girl voice, we'll go with the boy voice. Instead for, Derek. for young boys, yeah. they're not going for like the drag queen voices. What should Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to audition for you. <laughs> yes. Um, without necessarily divulging too much detail, I've heard a lot, I've heard, I've heard stories about uh, issues about union act voice actors versus non-union work. Do you have any uh, interesting thoughts on that on that field of voice acting? Well, if everything could be union, that'd be great. And Not for me. Well, no. I mean, if everything could be union and if everybody could have access to the union, that'd be great. Yeah, it's it's much harder to get to the union now that things have merged, like SAG and, and AFTRA merged into yeah. SAG AFTRA. And, and for those that don't know, SAG is the Screen Actors Guild, and AFTRA is the American Federation of Television and Radio so, Artists. Yeah. yeah, and they they used to be two separate entities under the same umbrella. Like the quadruple A, the American Actors Association of America. I don't know, um, but it's what it's what Equity, you know, theater union is under. It's what AFTRA and SAG are under. And the performance unions that you get at the uh, Universal Studios and stuff. And they merged recently, and now it's harder to get in because you have to be in a union project to qualify for the union. And in order to be in a union project, you have to be in the union. Luster. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a catch-22. Um, the only way you can really get in at this point is like the vouchers. Yeah. Getting the vouchers, which you can probably talk more about that because I don't know anything about anything. Yeah, the voucher system is <laughs> like if you're an extra in three union projects, uh, you can get a voucher for each project. If you get three, uh, you can qualify for the union. Or there's also tap partly where if you get a line in a union project, you will be automatically eligible for the union. Um, that's, that's kind of a weird thing though, because it's yeah. like they have to, it has to be pretty much either someone that really, really wants to get you into the union, like a friend.
minors or yeah. somebody, but. And I actually have Matt Mercer to thank for uh, getting me my eligibility. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw School of Thrones on YouTube. Um, it's kind of like Game of Thrones written by John Hughes, where all the characters are uh, high, in high school. So the Greyjoys are a swim team, uh, the Starks are hipsters, the Baratheons are jocks. It's Daenerys is the weird girl. Daenerys is the, the weird, weird transfer girl. girl. Yeah, it's really kind of cute. And uh, you can see Eric and his Vito. You, you can see me and his Vito in for it. For like a second. There's a, there's a scene where they're going through all the different houses and they're just looking at the camera and saying their name. So it's like Baratheon, Starks, and then it cuts to the Greyjoys and the swim team. And Matt Mercer uh, was directing this and it's just like, okay, we need some people for the Greyjoys. Okay, Eric, get here to have a Speedo. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, whatever. I, what, I, what, what I'll do with this, my craft. This is, what, this is what you do to get into the union. Yes, this is what you do to get into the union. <laughs> So there's just one, like, one second of me just going, great choice in the background with, uh, I don't know if anybody's familiar with the Harry Potter musical. Uh, the guy who played Ron Weasley in that was uh, Theon Greyjoy. Uh, and the, the awesome. uh, and Mary Kay Wiles, who was in the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, plays Sansa. Uh, Ashley Birch from Hey Ash, What You're Playing, isn't it, as Daenerys. So it's a really cute thing, I'd recommend it. But now I can always say that I got into the Union, or at least got eligible for the Union by wearing a Speedo. Which is... As far as like... Which I'm sure my parents expected when I moved to LA. Uh -huh. um, the, I mean, as far as like what... I mean, do you mean specifically for anime? Because I don't know much about it other... Uh, that, it would be interesting to hear the comparisons there. I have, just have a couple of voice actor friends who have discussed the... Uh, issue of uh, union versus union roles in uh, anime dubs in particular. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, if it was all union and uh, we could all be eligible for it, it would be great. Because yeah. uh, union pays better. Most, it, not for anime. Well, not for anime, but they, they still pay into the benefits of the union. They still yeah. pay into the pension and the health benefits. Your and, pension and, and they still pay the taxes in, on anime, so you're not worried yeah. about that. But, yeah, I don't know if you would, you definitely wouldn't go into the union just to do union. Yeah. One, there's not really much of it. No. Um, because people are too lazy to do I think the last one I heard of, yeah, I think the last union anime I heard of was Fate Zero. Okay. Yeah, that was, I think, the last one we've done. I think they're working on one now that they can't talk about. But, right. Um, Most of them. Okay. Yeah. You. And they did K, which was yeah. not union, though. No, um, Naruto. Yes. Yes. Even Naruto, I believe you can't remember. Bleach is not. It's I don't know what I what do that because I don't I don't have plans to join union anytime soon because I'm I mean I, I do voiceover part time maybe eventually I do it full time but right now I'm like I'm kind of comfortable doing what I'm doing like my 40 hour a week job and then doing voiceover every now and then um, so I have no plans to get into the union. I if Lucian was here he could talk about it he's in the union um, but 